Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, Butcher to the Stars, man of meat himself, your boy, Ted the Butcher, coming to you with another episode about the greatest hunk of meat of all time, beef. Now listen, I was going to get away from beef a little bit this time, but we got an email from a fan and a friend of the show named Chris, and Chris was curious about the beef knuckle which is a very interesting piece, comes from the hind quarter of the animal. Uh, and I, I just, you know, I can't, I, I got to answer questions. I mean, people have questions. That's what I'm here for, to help you out, to grow that understanding about meat. So that's what we're doing. So this series, I'm going to show you how to do a roast and some steaks out of this awesome piece of beef right here, the knuckle. Let's first start the way we normally do. Why is it called a knuckle? Where does it come from? Let's talk about all that stuff. Well, quite simply, it's, a, it's an interesting piece of beef. It's kind of kind of funky looking, if you will. Um, it's a little odd shape here. So this is kind of like what I consider the front. And if you can see this, uh, it's got this nice flat side here and some of this collagen uh, tendon running right in here. Uh, some of that sinew and muscle right over here. You have a uh, like a bunch of fat and a lot of sinew and that connective tissue running through there. There's some more of that collagen uh, and some of this, uh, this membrane that connects the muscle to the bone, right? You got some of that going on in there. And down here is kind of like this big divot that comes out. And this is quite literally where uh, a cow's kneecap would be. That's why this piece is called a knuckle because it sits kind of like this right on top of the cow's kneecap out of that hind quarter of the animal. But as you can see, the way this piece is shaped, it kind of tapers down, kind of like that. When we start doing whole legs, you'll get an even better sense of this. But it ta tapers down and sits right over that kneecap here. Below that is the shank, right? It'd be the hind shank of the animal, uh, which that's a whole other, whole other thing, whole other piece that we can uh, do some fun things with. I'm sure we'll do an episode on that at some point. Um, so Chris was asking about this piece uh, and, and just wondering what kind of things you can do with it. What are the general ways you can prepare it? You know, this is an interesting piece, too, because it's a very economical cut. It's not one of the most expensive, but it is kind of versatile. Uh, it's been called a spoon roast. Uh, the, the marketing sort of, uh, you know, slogan that goes along with that is it's so tender that you can eat it with a spoon. Uh, so you can do a roast out of it. Uh, it looks something like that. Uh, you can definitely make all kinds of steaks out of it. There's a couple over here. You can you can cut along these collagen lines, these veins, if you will, of collagen, uh, and kind of get pieces out just like that and sort of slice them into steaks. Uh, we have done before, in my shop, we have done a sirloin London broil, which, again, we talked about London broil when we talked about Top Brown. Check out my other video. There's another one that explains that, and we kind of talk about what a London broil is. Essentially, that's a, uh, a steak that's been marinated, uh, and then it is broiled in the oven, typically using flank steak. You can use top brown. Well, you can also use sirloin out of this. And the way we've cut that is by taking this piece, and it'll sit just like that once we've trimmed it. And, you know, you cut steaks out of it, maybe, you know, three quarters of an inch, an inch, not too crazy, you know, it's... Uh, it's definitely a piece that lends itself well to roasting uh, and definitely marinating and throwing on the grill. So, so there's a lot you can do with it. And also, of course, you can slice it real thin and make kind of sandwich steaks out of it. What's that called? A knuckle sandwich, right? I mean, come on. Butcher jokes are some of the best, aren't they? Anyway, that's, uh, that's another thing you can do with it. So these are good pieces that you can do kind of a lot with. And again, this is a great way to save yourself some money at the store because this is not filet mignon. It's not, it's not prime rib, you know, it's not going to cost you a fortune. So what are we going to do with this? Well, this is a peeled knuckle. What does that mean? That means it's been peeled at this point. Uh, typically, there's a nice layer of fat over here, the subcutaneous fat, which is uh, just under the skin. Again, right on that hind leg of the animal. It insulates this piece. Uh, when this is processed, uh, in a larger facility or uh, in, in my shop where we do snout to tail, we will, uh, you know, we'll peel that off and, uh, and take, take the, that layer off and kind of get something like this. Now, 
I'm not one to remove any excessive amounts of fat from these pieces because fat equals flavor and fat is beautiful. But with these, it's sometimes uh, so much connective tissue in there and so much collagen and things that aren't great to eat uh, that it becomes a little bit difficult. So without further ado, let's jump right into this. Let me get my rag, get my hands nice and clean so I don't lose my grip on my knives and we'll, uh, we'll start going. All right, so first thing you're gonna do is kind of orient yourself with the piece. I like to put this, this rounded smooth side with that fat on it. I like to put that down and we're gonna start here and start peeling off some of this fat and connective tissue. Somebody asked me if I'm throwing the meat on the floor down here when I do this. No, I have a fat barrel down here. It's a good bucket to just uh, kind of, it looks like a trash can. Uh, it's down there, trust me. Uh, you know, you, you got that down there and it catches just the fat and sinew uh, and all the, the stuff we're cutting off here. Some of it can be used for uh, making broths and stews and things like that, uh, you know, and stocks, if you will. But, you know, generally this is, a lot of this is waste. So anyway, we'll cover that in another episode. But just know that I'm not throwing the meat on the floor. That's a very important thing here. <laughs> so anyway, uh, what you'll start to see as you peel some of this off is there's a lot of seams in this muscle as we said and uh, what happens is these seams start to open up you know you see this nice piece of fat right in there we're going to take our knife just kind of dig it out you know this is a good piece if you're practicing if you're trying to uh, expand some of your butchery skills and your knife skills this is a good piece to kind of use particularly your small knife and you know work on your grips work through some of these seams, you know, gently and see how these muscles are put together and how these pieces separate. What you'll see on this side, uh, we'll call this my left side here. It depends how you're holding it when you trim it. But on the left here, there's this piece, which is kind of attached very loosely with a piece of that collagen silver skin underneath. We're going to pull that right off. This is a good piece uh, to grind part of your trimmings. It's not something you'd want to leave on if you're making a nice roast out of it. So you're going to pull that off and you'll start to see too some of these membranes that come off the muscle. You know, those you're going to want to trim up. They just kind of don't have a tendency to cook very well uh, and they don't make for a nice eating experience. So yeah, I'm trying to keep this facing you so you can see everything. This is one that definitely requires some uh, so movement and turning as you cut it, you know, just so because you're following those seams along and you're trying to get all this good stuff off. All right, my knife could use a bit of a sharpen here. Should probably hit that up at some point. But anyway, you know, this is a decent piece for a sandwich steak or some grind. That's another thing you can definitely throw. So we're going to just put that to the side and save it. Uh, you know, there's so much of the trimmings here, too, that obviously makes a very good lean ground beef for some hamburgers. That is where you get your flavor. So that's where you're going to want to maybe, you know, mix this up. This is, again, very lean, but it's definitely good for all those things. All right, so we're trimming this down. Now you see on the side here, there's some of the silver skin, this collagen. Uh, some of this internally, this collagen here, as you can see, those veins... I call them veins of collagen, so kind of like veins in a, uh, in a limestone marble or something like that. Uh, these veins of collagen, they will kind of congeal and render as you cook and sort of cook down and become more tender. So uh, it's something that shouldn't be too chewy when you eat it. Um, but some of the stuff along the outside might as well, and you're going to want to take that off. In the butcher trade, we call that denuding. Uh, when you're pulling off these tendons and the silver skin, it's called denuding the beef. So if you ever hear that term that this beef has been denuded, it sounds very racy, very, uh, very nice, but it's not. It just means taking the, this stuff off. So anyway, you're doing that. Now, again, when you're roasting this, and, and then again, this is a very lean piece, pretty much no matter what you're doing. If you're cutting into steaks or roast, um, you know, there's a little tiny bit of fat on here, especially if you've got a peeled knuckle look at it because some of it if you can see is very like very much of a membrane and if you get a good look on that it's a little bit like you know translucent you kind of see through it this is not like the typical kind of fat this is more like membrane -y 
uh, fat and you, you want to get that off because it's not going to really cook well it's not going to be great to eat uh, so you got to watch out you don't want to cut too much fat off because that's going to leave uh, for for flavor and moisture as it cooks but you're also not trying to leave that like that membrane on there either so once you get that off it should be pretty good now on this end again this is where this big tendons uh, run down from the leg you've got some more of that in here so we're going to go ahead and clean that up. Okay, I've got that pretty well cleaned up. Uh, you can see that there's a little bit of fat in there. You can pull that out as well. This is a good one to take that pistol grip, hold that knife nice and tight, and just use, you're using the tip of the knife, work it in that seam a little bit. There's some of that membrane in there that you might just want to get out. It's not going to make for a very pleasant eating experience. So you're coming through with your knife and you're just going to peel that out. Just clean it up. Anything that looks like it kind of like shouldn't be there if it was on the table ready to eat. That's the kind of stuff you're looking for. If you've never seen it before, it's something you'll get used to as you start doing some of this. Um, you know, these membranes, these sinews, this silver, that's some of the stuff I, I think instinctually as a meat eater, you start to learn that that's not what's supposed to be there. Uh, so that's really part of it. Um, so again, you're taking your knife, you work in that seam a little bit. You don't need to go too deep. It, it depends how much stuff, we'll call it stuff, some silver skin, some sinew, some muscle, veins even occasionally. Uh, it depends how much of that you need to remove. Um, so you kind of, especially with this piece, if you go too deep, these side pieces are going to start falling off. I will show you that when we start doing steaks. But for now, we've got that pretty well cleaned up and uh, we can pretty much tie this up into a roast. Now, here's the way I do it. So we've peeled out that middle. We're gonna kind of push it back together a little bit, get it nice and tight, and get it ready for us to tie it. Now, the reason for that is we're gonna tie it so this all holds together nicely. Uh, it'll stay more stabilized when you cook it. It'll stay nice and tight and it'll cook more evenly because it's held together in a more symmetrical piece. So we're gonna do that. Now once you, once you got it there, uh, again, I have this fat side down because this is a nice flat surface. Uh, it'll sit nicely on your block or on your table or on your counter, and you can grab your butcher's twine and just tie right around. So here's your front. We're gonna go right underneath, right? I hold it like this and just come right around the top into your knot and just like that. Again, I have to hit my knives on the steel, I think. It's getting a little dull today. And just like that, boom. These come in uh, various sizes, depending obviously on the size of the animal. You go like that, depends uh, you know, how big you need a roast. We figure on this, there's no bone in here. There's not much waste. This is a big solid piece of meat. This is uh, about half a pound a person is the, the amount you figure if you're planning uh, on, on serving this for some guests or whatever. Um, and that's the general rule. Again, you might have bigger eaters than that. You need to uh, may, may, maybe need a little more, excuse me. Um, if, you need, uh, if, you have, if you want leftovers, obviously go a little more than that. But generally, again, no bone, no waste, so about half a pound a person. So once you have it tied about where you want, we're just going to clean up this backside where the, the muscle, uh, sorry, where the knuckle was, where that kneecap was. And to make it a nice, even roast, I'm not going to cut too much off because I'm going to use this, this piece in the next video to show you how to do steaks. But I'm going to give you the general idea. We've got our ties here. Might even want to do one more. Let's, let's do one more. Let's say this is a bigger roast here. Boom. All right, right in there. So we got, let's say, a big one here. And then you're going to take it and just, you know, just kind of slice off from the back, right down and through. That knife do the work. You could use this for some nice grind, stir fries. Uh, you know, we'll seam that out. I'll show you how to do that next time. Uh, but that's also good scrap meat to use for, for various, uh, various applications. In the back, you'll start to see some of these tendons, right, in here. If they're very thick, so again, this isn't necessarily a, a, a must, but, you know, just judge it. You can kind of use that knife, peel down in there a little bit, right? Just use the tip, 
just a little, little tiny bit. And then you pinch that out, go in this way, boom. There we go. So, you know, you clean it up a little bit, get some of that tendon out of there. So basically, that there is your sirloin tip beef knuckle roast beef. And that'll cook at, uh, that'll cook at about 15, 18 minutes a pound at 350 in the oven. Season that up, a little salt and pepper, olive oil, rosemary, whatever you want, you're good to go. I'll catch you next time.